Uh, hi, so I'm here to tell you about um, making histograms using GPUs. So preamble to making histograms on GPUs is that making histograms on CPUs is uh, mostly solved. Um, there's not only one, but maybe probably two or three packages that does fast CPU histogramming. Um, the domain I come from wants histograms to also accumulate uh, variances for each of the beings. That's why we have our own histograms. But overall, it's a solved problem. Um, so the motivation for making GPU histograms is it's cool and we want to write Julia for everything. If you want a slightly more practical motivation, um, it's that we want to avoid moving data back and forth between your host memories and device memories. For example, when um, previous uh, simulation or data processing are done on GPU and then you make maybe Bing the distributions statistics and then you move on to something else. You don't want to move a lot of data off the device just to make histograms. So if you don't know what histogramming is, um, here's how it works. You have uh, input data um, and then some weights because your data points may be weighted and you have Bing edges which defines the buckets in your histogram. And the output is an array, which is uh, one less uh, long than the Bing edges, where they just record how high um, each of those bars are, if you want to visualize it. Uh, so all of the uh, actual benchmarks I show in this talk have um, weights, because that's uh, most realistic for our um, domain. So if you, if you make histograms on CPU, right, it's fairly straightforward. You initialize your output Bings. Um, and then you start iterating over pairs of inputs and weights, and you just compute where does this input corresponds to, and you increment that um, entry in the output array by your weight. Uh, so the question is how to parallelize this onto the GPUs. So on CPUs, if you want to parallelize, uh, it's fairly straightforward. You partition the data into n chunks, and then you just make n histograms, and you merge them. If you pick a sensible n, for example, the number of uh, physical cores you have, it's usually very good and you would hit your memory bound way before you use all of your cores. Uh, this approach does not work on GPU because first of all, we don't want to launch N kernels if you think that way. Um, and second, it doesn't answer the question, how do you do one of them? Because you don't want to view one GPU core as a CPU core because that's just not uh, the most efficient way to use GPUs. So we need a new approach. Uh, so I'm going to tell you two approaches, and I'm going to call them naive and shared memory. Uh, so we're going to compare them, and the naive is essentially the naivest thing you can think of, which is you let each GPU thread take one data point, and you directly try to atomically write into an output. Um, the shared memory approach does something smarter, where um, the thread accumulates to a local, memory, uh, local histogram before um, writing to the global one. I will tell you about that a bit more. And how do we measure the uh, performance of these um, approaches is we have two dimensions. One is how do they scale as the amount of data you have increases. And the other is how does it scale when the number of things increases or decreases. Um, so here's what a naive kernel looks like. Um, basically, as I was alluding to, uh, you have input where you take each of them uh, each value in the input is taken by one thread, and then you directly compute the Bing index, and you do atomic addition into the corresponding Bing. Uh, so this is straightforward. However, you already, at the back of your mind probably, uh, you have an expectation that this works well only when the uh, log contention is low here. So we can look at how well it, it works. Um, so this is a, a performance as a number of inputs. So this is if you scale the size of the data set. Uh, and we see that asymptotically, it's about 70 faster than one core. Uh, OK, that's not too bad. Um, but what happens when we change the number of bings? So here's how the uh, speed slow down. Um, so the higher means more slow down um, as a function of number of your histogram bings. So you can see here, uh, if we uh, go back down to about 250 bings from 1,000, um, we have about 2.5 times slowdown, which is not ne negligible depending on what you're doing. But this is what you expect from a naive kernel because we see this structure where the smaller, beings, the smaller number of things you have, the more log contention there would be. So this is expected. And the question is, can we do better? So the answer is yes. Um, we utilize something called shared memory. So this is mostly universal on all the accelerators. 
where they are um, thread block local. So we basically make a copy of the output histogram and then um, let all the threads write into that first before we do a ON update onto the um, final output uh, bings which lives on the uh, VRAM. Um, so here I have a footnote that says this is number of being smaller than n because this picture, um, if you take it literally, does not work if you have too many beings. Um, but in the backup, I'll show you how that works. There's a smaller loops going on. So what do we expect from this? This basically avoids the heaviest contention because we have breaking it up into each thread blocks. So this should alleviate most of the lock contention we had before. Um, and first of all, it's just straight up faster, even when you have sufficient number of beings. So compared to 70 times speed up before, now we're looking at a 300 speed up. Um, so that's first pretty good. And now if we look at how does this scale as number of beings, we see that it does not have the catastrophic slowdown um, when you have uh, exceedingly small number of beings. So that's also good because usually I think people are more likely to have 100 beings than to have uh, 10,000 beings, I think, other than in particle physics where we have a million beings in multi-dimensions. But usually that's not where people worry about. So that's good. So the conclusion here is basically you should always use the shared memory um, uh, approach. So here's a summary plot um, where I put the CPU, the GPU, and for reference, I pulled the uh, CuPy implementation of histogram here, um, and you can see that uh, CuPy has a much higher kernel launching overhead because of Python probably. Um, but here we can see that um, the crossover happens about at 2K, which is not that large for a data set you want to make histograms of. So this is pretty promising if you launch kernel from Julia. This is quite small. And some caveat um, is that we haven't flushed out the interface yet. We haven't decided if we want to make GPU a parametric type of existing histograms, or do we want a new histogram type? So if you are a stakeholder using histograms, um, let me know. The implementation itself is, in theory, backend uh, agnostic because we use kernel abstraction. Uh, however, in practices, we run into vendor-specific uh, capability issues, for example, um, Apple's metal just does not have atomic floating point addition on the shared memory. They have that for the global memory, but not shared memory. Um, and with that, I'll take a question or two. Thank you. 